we have to, we need to, and we must just quickly go over what's happening with E1. So as most of you guys know, E1 has been involved in a little bit of turmoil recently because their founder, one of their co-founders of E1, a guy called Yuval Hen, had been exposed as an active member of the IDF, right? Active as in like just the other day, he personally flew to fucking Palestine. He flew to fucking Gaza and allegedly picked up arms and went and slain a bunch of people out there, allegedly, right? So, you know, force and fleeing to everybody out there that's going through what they're going through, you know, solidarity and love and light and support to all my Palestinian brothers and sisters and free Palestine until the fucking end. But allegedly... Yuval Hen was out there on the front line fighting for the IDF, which is fucking crazy when you think about what place E1 plays within the clubbing scene and landscape in London and the fact that they've got all these progressive, um, you know, um, parties that are very forthright and vocal about the support of Palestine, all this sort of shit. To have one of the founders be actively out there, you know, murdering people, quote unquote, allegedly, I don't know nothing, don't sue me, is fucking crazy, right? So let's kind of go over the article courtesy of RA where they kind of round up everything that happened. So RA as follows. Yuval Hen, co-founder of London Club E1, has resigned as director following the allegation that he recently served in the Israeli Defense Force in Gaza. According to Companies House, the Israeli club owner and former photographer left his post at E1 Records Limited and Studio Space Limited and Upspace Limited earlier today. February 16th, Hen's business partner Oran Arush remains in charge across all three companies. So because of the backlash that was happening online and because everybody was essentially, you know, um, cancelling E1, DJs were dropping off and saying that they weren't going to perform there. Um, people were putting pressure on, pressure, sorry, on Club Verboten, the legendary kink party to cancel Cancel, but they didn't cancel they followed through and did the event which i agree with because it's so last minute but loads of djs dropped out and didn't want to perform there anymore and i'm assuming going forward they're probably going to struggle to keep a lot of their more progressive um you know um parties that are basically very forthright in the support of um, the Palestinian people out there to keep them on board and generally the community might probably turn their back on them so they're kind of suffering for all that sort of shit and obviously the guy got nervous and he withdrew but unfortunately for him the evidence that's out there suggests that you know he's still probably an active he's still probably receiving some type of money from the club that's probably going to go back to funding that war um over there in palestine and obviously um desecrating and dis dismantling and destroying people's lives over there and in general if i'm not mistaken um this resignation has only come about the other day even though their statement that they put out is suggesting that the yuval hen guy left in october or something which obviously isn't the case because he just resigned from his post just the other day um, it continues to says the resignation follows allegations that surfaced yesterday on Instagram via a joint post by Ravis of Palestine and writers against the war on Gaza. It features a screenshot of a now deleted Facebook post from someone who appears to know Hen. The text references Hen fighting somewhere in Gaza and is accompanied by a photo of him seemingly in IDF uniform. And if you want to just have a double check about that, we'll go to the Ravis of Palestine actual page, which is over here, and you actually see the screenshot, which is wild to think, right? Wild to think that you know, as there are events happening in, Pal in in E1 that are maybe, um you know, with the proceeds going to helping people in Palestine, maybe there's DJs wearing certain, you know, regalia and items of clothing and support the people over there. The actual founder of the club itself is literally on the front lines, you know, with a fucking gat in his hand, um, going there and actually maybe, supposedly, maybe not, hopefully not, killing people. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the fucking contrast that has happening with this club culture stuff we're going through? It's fucking nuts. The thing that I'm most surprised by, and I'd love somebody to tell me who has more information about this, I'm surprised that the amount of Israeli people who are involved in the electronic dance community or industry or scene, maybe something that I wasn't aware of, but I'm surprised that there are so many Israeli people. Like, Isra Israelis are like a big part of electronic music scene in general across the board because you think about the issues that was going on with the whore you think about boiler all these, like it's really interesting to see that there's so many israeli people that are plugged into dance music across europe like it's really really interesting and i wonder why that's the case specifically why that country those people are wonder maybe because they obviously have a very 
but you know popular dance music electronic scene there there's a big gay scene there also maybe that's part of the reason why but it's interesting that there's a lot of israeli like israeli people like are very you know they're very much a part of club culture and industry and shit um they're probably I, i'd imagine if they own all the clubs there's probably a large majority of them that also own a lot of the record agency a lot of the booking agencies and shit so yeah interesting it continues in a statement shared with resident advisor e1 said no connection to political movements and confirmed that its previous owner has stepped away in october due to being deeply affected by the ongoing crisis across israel and palestine that's hilarious right how are you going to be affected by the war and what's going on there in israel and palestine but then you're dressed up in uniform of the idf like so you're concerned about the safety of both people but then you've got a gun and you're dressed up in regal of the idf so what what's happening there please let me know how does that make sense um the club added will continue to provide a safe space for people to enjoy club culture in east london this is insulting isn't it how can you I already the term or the phrase safe space is of definitely overused it's definitely a ruse it's definitely a virtue signaling tool that actual abusers use to cover their tracks you think of fucking crossbreed r.i.p that party right the promoter or the person behind it was all high and mighty acting as if like they got some safe space and they were better than everybody else and i had a bit of an occurrence with the main guy um who used to run crossbreed when i went to Berghain, and there was some girl that was you know looking like she was going through something and i was trying to help her out with some other girl and i put my hand on the shoulder to whatever to kind of go over to her like just you know instinctively not even thinking about it and he was like don't touch her like you're trying to make it look like i was being a creep or something right you try to make me basically embarrass me for everybody i was like bruv like what the fuck are you doing jeremy like like caught me off guard and then later on you know he gets exposed of being a fucking super turbo creep and running this kink sex positive party thing but also using it as cover to allegedly um you know do some fucking shady shit behind the scenes to the point where that whole that whole party had to kind of implode and you know fold into itself and shit and it's completely gone and it's not around anymore so people love to overuse this term safe space to cover their tracks so it's even more disgusting to see these people e1 using the term safe space when the fucking co-founder of the club is a fucking idf soldier like how dare you you know what i mean like jesus christ in response to the situation popular sex positive party club of Burton cut ties with e1 earlier today with a statement it won't return to the club in march though the tonight's event featuring grace dow will go ahead unfortunately grace dow also dropped out so i don't know who played maybe they had to just have their friends and family playing the funny thing is everybody was publicly dropping off from playing club of Burton, but i bet you they got loads of dms from people also saying hey i'll play I'll pay for free. You know what I mean? That's the nature of the game, man. There's so many, there's so many DJs, but such a lack of opportunities that if you are taking yourself out of playing certain gigs based on your political leanings or how you feel um, about certain people, about certain people or certain scenes or whatever it may be, there's going to be a queue of people willing to take your position down the line. So, you know, it is what it is. It continues. So that's basically what happened there. So that was obviously a shocking, you know, a feature or something that happened recently. And then the other thing that I thought was really funny was this post courtesy of Ravers um, for Palestine and also Nini H, who I'm a big fan of, right? I love Nini H. I've spoken about her plenty of times here on my flipping little podcast. But I thought this was incredibly cringe incredibly cringe and you know you need to give your head a wobble and fucking chill out a little bit so nini h posted on her story remember what i did in that club right she obviously is starting to like jack herself off a bit and she posts this screenshot of a video that features herself playing in e1 where she manages to play and she's got um what you call it a scarf a kafir and she basically waves it around her head <laughs> oh look at how brave i was when i was playing in e1 and i waved this scarf above my head i'm like come on nini h come on babe like i like you you seem like a chill person but you know what i mean you're not ahead to me do you know what I mean? you're not some fucking freedom fighter out here because you decided to wave a flag above your head it's not that serious do you know what i mean you didn't do that much and i think people out there are really conflating the fact that they're sharing posts they're sharing hashtags and stuff as if they're like doing something it's like 
I get it. You're supporting. I get it. You're a good ally. You're a great ally. You're spreading the message. You're keeping the, you know, you're keeping this plight alive and in the, in the new cycle, you're not making sure people not, don't forget. You're making sure the resources are being shared, how you can help all this sort of stuff. But let's not confuse that for actually being on the front lines, for actually having people within your family pass away and stuff, for actually affecting you in your real life. Like, let's not conflate feeling something and also being there on the front lines doing something like and also come on waving a fucking flag like a sorry a scarf sorry um come on let's let's relax let's relax a little bit but um i do like some of the posts from these other platforms or the other organizations such as safe only limited the statement they put out says as follows the struggle for liberation has many fronts we are in full support of our friends at club verboten and recognize and appreciate the huge amount of work they have done to protecting and advancing our interpersonal freedoms we remain opposed to the state of israel and its brutal occupation of palestine and are committed to taking action to find occupation to end occupation sorry however we can our actions here are are continually involving in co-creation with the safe only team this is core to our practice as a collective that exists to affect change across many different liberty fronts in recognition of the joint struggle we also committed to ensure safe intuitive working environments for our team that allowed them to work with integrity pride and confidence we believe that cancelling our work with e1 was the right thing to do given the revelations about the owner we look forward to working with cover person again in a new venue so i love that you know again cutting them off like hey even if it's going to hurt us we're not going to work with them anymore because it doesn't line up with our models our principles and our worldview and that is that i fucking respect it i love to see that sort of stuff but i'm wondering going forward what some of these other events are going to do like what are they going to do and I, i'm wondering what what our partner is going to do because i think on there's a lot of pressure on promoters more so to make a stat to take to, to, to make a stand especially if you are pro palestine and anti is anti zionist anti zion you know anti israel you are out here saying all these big things and going and doing taking part in the protests and the marches and stuff this is when it really matters though do you know what i mean like what if like are you really gonna stand are you really gonna stand on business yes or no um so i'm curious to see what some of these promoters are going to be doing for some of these forthcoming events coming up like will they make a stand and also cancel their events will it be the djs cancelling first at least the events ca getting cancelled but i think most punters won't care that's the real truth of the matter most people that go to these events aren't going to give a shit um they don't really they're not into the weeds as much as i am with this sort of stuff um they just go to see certain djs they go to see for certain parties but they don't really care about all the other background stuff that's happening because again this uh, even though this is on a public platform i think most people outside of the you know the i guess the nerdier chin stroke inside of things that i'm involved in don't really know about any of this sort of stuff so i've got a feeling that most likely the e1 will still have a bunch of people in there right they've got parties here with kabosi happening soon they've got a party here with pan paul happening soon we've got a jimmy jules and tricks playing there we've got stella bosi who's a big um influencer online there's a lot of like interesting or funny co te techno content she's going to be there that's going to be crowded you've got quite a lot of big events you've got a sarah landry event she's huge so i think a lot of people are still going to just end up going and not really give a shit so I wonder if this is actually going to have any real life um, consequence or effect to E1 or if it's just going to be a bit of chatter online and then it's going to kind of go and kind of leave from there on. I'm curious to see how it kind of works out. I really am curious to see how all of it pans out. So, but I went to also check actually their Instagram to see what people are saying. So let's actually check the comments on the Ravers of Palestine stuff. I'll see what the temperature is and what people are saying regarding this crazy revelation about the co-founder of E1. So it's curious to see what they're going to say here. So the owner is founder of E1. We saw already. We've got an emoji here from Adonis um, with a vomit emoji. We know what they mean there. We've got another person saying here. Oh, we've got um, Sama Abdul Hadid saying, keep up the good work for dating us. Another person here saying he was my boss ages ago. This does not surprise me in the slightest. Him and his business partner both celebrated when Netanyahu won years ago at the office. So, Jesus, Yuval resigns director today. This person says he also resigned at the same time 
as the other music business, E1 Records Limited. While his recognition speaks for itself, E1 is still an Israeli owned company. In fact, it has been since the 2015, according to the company warehouse, company, sorry, register. The Israeli M. Arush Uran is, is, is now the only appointed director. It's crucially important to know who owned managed the enterprise. Seeing Yuval's wealth, influence, and his time in the army, there's no doubt that some of his money made it through to the businesses will be donated towards the country, Israel, where he so proudly served and today perpetuated. Um, perpet sorry, perpet perpetuating atrocities. I can't believe that all these beers, tickets, and mixers and liquors I purchased in E1 might possibly have landed in Israel. Oh, um, yeah, exactly. That is really hard to take, especially if you're, you know, if you're out here fighting for Palestinians on this side of the world, you're protesting, you're sharing things online, resources, and stuff. To know that some of the monies that you've spent in that club are gone towards fucking harming the very people that you are trying to actively fight for that's got to do something to your mental bro this post is ridiculous the previous owner has nothing to do with the venue plus he runs a community based on music lovers they have no political relationships you guys are just here to just gain some likes but nothing is going to happen to the venue no that's there's there's kind of some truth in this but i also think it's fairly okay for people to you know um base their club going decisions on who people are behind the places that they're going to and whether or not they're aligned with them politically i think it's a bit obviously overall it's a bit lame i think we should get to the point where clubbing is apolitical but unfortunately it isn't it's never not going to be apolitical right it's always going to be political i think people could argue that the genesis of fucking clubbing is intense intensely um, political itself so we're never going to get to a point where it's just like oh just care about the music just dance man it's never going to be that so if that's the case and you are politically active you should base where you go based on the politics of the club that you go to if it doesn't align you are well within your rights to say go fuck yourself and take your money elsewhere that should be what we should be promoting it's just a shame that in london we don't have many options so people are probably going to be forced to keep going there because there's not many of there's not many clubs here that book the people that they kind of book um they you know it's just kind of the nature of the beast so you're gonna have to decide are you going to uh take the hit on your social ex you know dalliances to kind of you know back your political leanings and support or are you going to stand on your shit and back the people that you're fighting for and take your money elsewhere another one friends is a rabbit hole that begins with e1 and ends at fold i think this is unfair i think they they already tried to do the whole fold cancellation thing and i think the most they could find out was that one of the founders was involved in some sort of um crypto no some sort of like scam to get money and then that money was used to buy equipment early on for e for fold which i understand because pioneer decks they don't you know pioneer don't do discounts you have to buy everything at fucking retail value or at least cost price so Whoever they had to do to start that club and to build it, I'm for it, even if it was criminal activities. Um, now the club is fucking one of the best clubs in London, so I definitely do um, champion doing some level of criminality to go legit, so I'm all for it. But that was the most that they could find. And I think they had like a really, you know, a, a kind of ill-advised post about what was going on in Palestine and they, you know, they closed the comments, but I think that was it. Uh, but I think Fold are basically clean. So let's not try to cancel Fold for nothing, to be honest. Let's l allow it. E1 has always had a, the bookiest energy, so somehow doesn't come as a surprise. Absolutely awful place and vibe will not be missed. That's the thing that I say. I've always said I've been the number one champion hater of E1. I've always fucking hated it as a club. So it's a shame it hasn't. It's not being cancelled because it's a shit club. It's instead being cancelled because one of the owners is an IDF fucking soldier. I right? prefer it. People just cancelled it because it was a terrible club. But you know, people in London don't really have any fucking standards. Anywhere they can go, where they can party until six a.m. and take their drugs, they'll just go. Um, there's no real fucking discernibility in terms of what makes a good or bad club and stuff. It's a bit nonsense. But what can you do? Um, have Ravens for Palestine gone to see the victims of the? nova festival who were all races and religions so, hey are you boycotting other venues owned by oligarchs supporting russia or just fixated on israel any of you ever been to israel palestine this is dumb though you can't just say because somebody hasn't been to palestine that they can't fucking fight for their people like that's that's fucking stupid that's the whole point of having some semblance of humanity is that you fight for people and you, and you speak up for people even if you don't fucking know them and you're not from there another one says Yuval still owns a club under upspace holdings which is the ultimate owner of, of e1 he owns the studio space too. creative industry needs to boycott um no, i'm boycotting e1 i've never been but unfold has been the best experience for me to be honest and I, I heard it wasn't a good club yeah you're not missing anything to be honest this person elisa um, e1 literally was one of the worst clubs ever in my opinion um they just had some of the best bookings some of the best parties but 
as a club experience is fucking awful. Um, especially the security, man. They're ultimate vibe killers. They're up there with fold with fabric security, sorry. E1 security and fabric security are into you can, you know, you can you can swap them basically, and they're the same. Super vibe killers. Eclair Fifi, DJ says, I won't miss the space. DJ there a few times, never been, never had a good time. Um, she probably won't be there again after saying that, but she probably doesn't give a fuck. So big up Eclair Fifi. What would have happened if he had gone to fight for a different terror organization? He would not be allowed back in the country. Why is this thing different? Very good point. Our discrimination is fascist. Your discrimination is fascist. You have you want everyone to think your way or no way. I doubt if any of you have ever been to the re okay. This is I guess this is the I guess this is a pro Israeli stance defense. If you've never been to Palestine, you can't defend Palestinians. Okay, cool. You can't fight for them or advocate for them because you've never been there. All right, cool. It's also funny the most vocal pro the most vocal pro Israeli people are also people who don't live in Israel. You know that's also the funniest thing about it. The most fucking flagrant and loudest Zionists out there are also people who don't live anywhere near fucking Israel. That's fucking hilarious. I mean, it is for you to form your opinions with all the sound-sided indoctrination and propaganda you've consumed. The only fight for your survival you've had is when you're ended up in casualty after a night of booze. Woo, okay. If you had to protect your families from fundamentalist terrors, then you would fight and do anything. What, like fucking, like fucking kill six-year-olds? Like blow up fucking hospitals? Is that what is that what anything means? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Not one of you have mentioned the horrors committed to Hamas or ISIS October 7th and the innocent Israeli babies and children slaughtered by these barbarians or the hostages languishing in terror tunnels. You're all one-sided and dim and you can't do the truth. The, the interesting thing about it is just it's so one-sided. From what I've seen so far, the casualties on the Palestinian side are like over 30,000. Israelis are like... I think about 1,000 1, something officially from what I've seen online. 30,000 people, 30,000 Palestinians have died. And only like, it's just in the space of how the war started, right? From the time the original attack from Hamas happened at that music festival to now, 30,000 Palestinians have perished. And only 1,000, you know, Israelis have. And here they are saying, you'd never speak about October 7th. It's like, bruh. It's even more depressing if you go on Instagram and you do the geolocation thing and you search places in like, you search Tel Aviv and you search Gaza. You'll see people in Tel Aviv literally on the beach. You see people in Tel Aviv like chilling, walking around, having a great time. And then you go to Gaza geolocation on Instagram and you just see like rubble, rubble and like n nothing. It's like, it's so depressing. It's like, Jesus Christ. One side is like getting decimated while the other one is just living life like nothing's happening. But if you go back onto the Mixmag article or the Mixmag post about the E1 founder resigning and go to the comments, it's completely different from what you see on the Ravens of Palestine. These people here are very, very pro-Israeli. So someone says here, damn, I really didn't know Mixmag followers are so pro-Israeli. Yeah, exactly. So remember how this all started when Hamas killed people at a music festival? No, just me. So very pro, I, I didn't, again, I'm surprised again, maybe the founder, again, this is why I'm shocked by and I wish people would give me a fucking education about the link that Israeli has or the history that is Israel as a country has with dance music because it seems like Israelis are everywhere, bro. They are really, they've got a really strong, or maybe it's not the Israeli thing, maybe it's more of a Jewish thing. Maybe that's what it is. But there's a lot of pro-Israeli people that are associated with the dance music scene. It's really interesting. Um, remember when Palestine invaded that music festival and killed all those innocent people that were just listening to music and having a good time? I remember. Another one says here, happy to follow him. Um, thanks for the service and looking forward to dancing there. Jesus Christ, kosher deals. Um, as for all the ravers, thank you for supporting Nova Music Festival and of the 360 plus ravers who were gang raped and brutally murdered for dancing to set to, to, to the same music you don't, you dance to. Music is so unifying. Okay. So I guess they're being a little bit, um, you know, it's a little bit of sarcasm there. I don't know, you know, sar sarcasm and you're talking about people being murdered is a bit much, but hey, another one says here, all these Israelis in the comments comparing, okay, cool, we said, another one, imagine boycotting a venue owned by someone in the rave community who went to defend his people after 360 of them were murdered, hundreds more injured, many raped and 40 taken hostage as they were done. They repeat the same thing, in it. The pro israeli people have the same thing they keep repeating. But what about everybody else has died since then? What about the 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 the, the scores of innocent, you know, the hundreds, the, the thousands of innocent people who've died since that one horrible event that happened in the beginning? What about that then? Is that justifiable? 
So if they kill 360, you kill 30,000. Is that like how you, is that how you balance the odds? <laughs> like what the fuck are you talking about? The rave community should have held an event at the venue to honor and celebrate these people. Wow. That, um, what sort of upside down world are we living in? Another one says, yeah, I'm, I'm angry at Israel as the next person, but isn't IDF conscription compulsory for Israelis? Would he have been, had a, oh, come on, you can shut up, you idiot. Another one, I went to E1 and had an incredible time. Okay, you're definitely lying. No one goes to E1 and has an incredible time. You might have an incredible time seeing a DJ, but not incredible time in the club. Let's relax. When I was traveling through London, it felt like the authentic London drum and bass drum and bass which basically means no no black people in it drum and bass is like white white jungle <laughs> authentic london white <laughs> what a shame that based on one person's background and service to their country they lose their job you can't conflate one person's actions of their country mm, it's not conflation when you see them dressed up in fucking combat gear with a fucking ak-47 and shit come on bro it's truly ironic to see ravers taking the side of a group that murdered a bunch of ravers. But you didn't also, but you also probably murdered ravers. What the fuck are you talking about, bro? You guys murdered more people than they've ever murdered. Remember, this is, could have all been ended if you just gave the hostages back, but that would make too much sense. <sighs> As if they think it's going to end because of the hostages coming back. Come on, man. The Zionist regime is working overtime on this thread. Anyone also cringe at Zionist comments? The racism and pure miseducation of the comments is sickening. The UK should stop worrying about the uh, free Palestine. Amazing how one day Hamas is deemed a terrible organization and next is humanitarian one. Music industry is no place for divide when the sole purpose of the rave is to unite the world in lights and lasers. Okay, shut up, you idiot. Kumbaya, motherfucker. Another one says, so you wouldn't post about the massacre at the Nova Festival, but you post about this. <sighs> come on, come on. Still boycotting it. Big up one man, legend. We love him. Uh, still still boycotting it. Dog sh trash of a venue anyway. I agree with him on that one. Um, another person says, okay, and Hamas killed so many members of the dance community on October 7th. Honestly, th these these uh, pro-Israeli people have the same fucking thing they just repeat all the time October 7th October there's many things that have happened since October 7th brothers um bro is, was slaughtering Palestinian children to big room side trance how disgusting he's been hounded out by this hatred Hamas commits rape and murder against innocent people at a music festival and the result is that a medic who goes to Israel to, he's a medic you think this guy was a medic you think this guy went there to fucking give people paracetamol and administer first aid is that what you think really is that what you think you think this guy was there to be a medic really come on bro let's be real let's be real let's be real um hamas commits rape and murder against into people at music festival the result is that a medic who goes to israel to help the sick and the injured is target of hate crime madness we must speak out against this madness no mate we must speak out against fucking dog shit owners of dog shit clubs who do dog shit things and then put the whole dog shit club into disrepute because many people now have to suffer off the back of it, right? The club will probably end up shutting down or changing ownership, which would then affect people's ability to feed their family. So his own fucking selfishness and his own narcissism and his own psychopathy and his own fucking bloodlust has now led to people fucking losing their jobs. Another one here, oh, it's a black person. Bring the hostages home. Rah, there's black pro-Israelis. Shit, I didn't know that they existed. There's black Zionist. Okay. Israel intelligence knew the October festival would be a target a year in advance, a whole year. It's very tempted. Uh, cool, cool. I wish you a lot of success. Support my friend. The most frequented club. I'll never go again. Now I know this. I stand with the IDF, most moral army in the world. Moral armies. What does that even mean? That's an oxymoron in itself. Mo a moral army is like fucking ethical cocaine. It doesn't make sense. Shitty venue anyway. Maybe Ravens for Palestine should organize a Raven Gaza to feel better. What a bunch of has that this whole anyway whatever we've read most of it um e1 will it suffer will it come to a shattering end most likely not because most people don't care about this sort of shit this is mostly stuff that i care about when you're super involved and in the weeds with this content and with this shit when it comes to dance music but i think most people outside of my little bubble don't really care and would rather just go and rave and hear fucking you know hear fucking sarah landry drop some of her fucking big hits on the fucking dance floor go to some of their favorite djs play go and see fucking who we see here we got adana twins playing soon we've got a teletech party happening that's going to be pretty big i'd imagine we've got a berlin and london party happening with someone called bianca banks 
We've got a Disco Express event happening with Dan Swindle, Kobalsi playing very soon. We've got Georgia Aguili playing, who I don't know who that is. So many big people playing, so most likely no one will care. It'll move on. Everything will be as the same as it was before, and it'll continue, and it'll be exactly the same thing, and it won't fucking change a single thing. That is the unfortunate nature of the game and the industry that we're in. What can we do? What can we do?